Welcome back to Introduction to Linguistics. Today we're going to look at some more morphology, specifically derivational and inflectional morphemes, and we're going to look at some ways that we put bound morphemes into free morphemes and what happens when we change tense and stuff. So we have internal change, depletion, reduplication, and stress. So these are very interesting topics, and we've already looked at this first part a little bit, and that's derivational morphemes. So these are where the affix forms a word with a different category than the base word. So for instance, if we draw trees here, we have this er, which is an affix, and sing, which is a verb. Now when we put those two together, singer is a noun. So what we have here is we have the change from a verb to a noun, and that makes it derivational we derive a noun from a verb and an affix. What about poisonous? Well, we know poisonous is an adjective. It describes a situation, like that man is poisonous, or that dog over there is poisonous, or that food is poisonous. Well, O-U-S is an affix, and poison is a noun, it can also be a verb to poison, so it doesn't really matter which one it is. But we derive an adjective from a noun or a verb with this affix. In fact, it's more convention to say that it's a noun, but it could be a verb depending on how you look at it. But typically this O-U-S merges with a noun and not a verb. So that's derivational morphemes. Inflectional morphemes are when affixes do not change the category. So we've seen this before. Um, if we have read or reads, well, read is a verb. We have an S, which is a progressive marker, and these form to make a verb. So we don't see any change here. And we also have untie. Well, untie is a verb to untie something, and this goes with the affix un and the verb tie. So some people would say that this tie is a noun and tie can be a noun, but this specific affix only merges with verbs. So when this affix goes with the verb, it makes a new verb. Like what about do, undo, or you could even say attacked and he unattacked. It doesn't really make any sense, but it doesn't sound wrong in our heads to say, oh, I, I unattacked him. You know, it doesn't internally in your mind change it to a different category. It fits. So some affixes have properties that are inflectional affixes and derivational affixes. We're not going to look at those specifically, but just the the change, the derivations, and inflections, it's important to know the difference and which one is which. So, now we have some ways that morphology is not shown through affixes, because that's not how language works. It doesn't follow a simple rule of saying, okay, we either put a part at the end, the beginning, or in the middle. So we say that morphology isn't always concatenative. And this just means we either put it at the end or the beginning or somewhere in the middle. No, things change. So let's take a look at these examples here. Sing. If we make sing a past tense, then this i sound in sing changes to an a sound in sang. So we can't show this with affixes. It's not like we just put an ed at the end of sing and make it singed, because that's not right in English. Instead, we say sang. Now, in jump, all we do is we add ed, and it's jumped. So, these are differences in morphology. In fact, you see this in children. What will happen in children is they will say sing, they will say sang, but then after learning the ed rule, they'll go back for a few months to a year and start saying singed. A good example here, too, is 
go, actually, I'm not going to do that yet. Um, so those are two good examples. In fact, sink, and then it goes to sunk. So again, you have a change in the I and the U there, or the I and the uh sounds. So these are what we call irregular verbs in English. You know, the term irregular doesn't necessarily fit these all that well, but this is just an example of internal change. Now, there are types of internal change. Uh, one is, one is suppletion. It's kind of, kind of cool, where we completely change the morpheme. It's not even the same word. So, I am, when we go to the past tense, this just becomes I was. So this am and this was are two completely different words. There is no nothing we could add to am that would ever tell us, yeah, it's was. There's no rule we could come up with that changes am to was. It's just a completely different change of words. What about go? Well, we say I go, and then children would say I goed, but that's not right. We know it's not right. Instead, it's I went. So we go from go to went. Again, this is a better example of an irregular verb in English, and this is something that rules simply cannot generate for us. This is something that just happens, and it's based on etymology and its origins, but there's no rules that we can say, this is how you go from go to went. Can't do it. That is suppletion. Other languages are full of suppletion. Every language likes suppletion. At least most of them. Reduplication is another type of morphology, and this is when we repeat all of a word or part of a base. Um, in English, we can say, oh yeah, that was so-so, and oh yeah, it's a little teeny-weeny, itsy-bitsy, yellow polka dot bikini. So these are reduplication in English. We don't have that much reduplication in English, but we do like to use wordplay. And Reduplication and wordplay does tell us that, you know, this process does exist and it's part of the mind and there's inherent structure in words and syllables and stuff, but that's for a different course. Um, other languages will use it a lot more robustly. They'll use it a lot more frequently. For instance, Russian, uh, this is pronounced chut, so chut chut. When we say chut, we mean man, and when we say chut chut, we mean all sorts of men. So this reading you'll learn in the phonetics section. Haven't done it yet, but choot, choot, choot. These are different words. If my pronunciation is bad, I'm sorry, Russians. I'm just doing the best I can with the phonetics I was given, the phonemes I was given. So it's a little bit more robust in Russian. They'll use it more often than they would in English. So that's reduplication. Just take part of a word and repeat it. All right, stress. Stress is very big in English. Um, there are some languages where stress changes quite a bit. And this is separate from intonation, like, or pitch. Intonation, pitch, and stress are all different. So I'm going to talk about stress here. We have two nouns, record and project. And we have two verbs, record and project. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, record, record. The biggest stress is on the beginning here. So we're going to denote that with an apostrophe before the syllable where the stress occurs. What about project? Project. Well, the stress is at the beginning here. Now, when we go to record, we say record. The stress is right before that k, so it's record. Same with project. Well, we put the stress there. So a shift in stress changes whether a word is a noun or a verb. That's kind of interesting. So we could say I bought a record or I recorded a record. That sounds weird. I bought a record. Sounds very weird. That's because the stress is part of the meaning of the word. When, when we say, I want to record something, the image in our mind, the word, it includes that stress. 
when we hear it, when we say it, the meaning and the category of the word includes the stress. So that's another property of English words that might not have been so apparent. So those were some types of morphology. There's one last fun one, which won't be covered in this video. It's going to be covered in the next video. And we're going to talk about word creation. So these were changes in word. And now we're going to do some word creation next time. And there's a very cool one, which I'm sure everyone learns the word in English and they say, Oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. But in linguistics, it's a little bit more interesting, because not only do we look at English, we also look at some other languages. So next time we're gonna look at word creation. It's gonna be great. As always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, you can like it, share it. It all helps me out and it would be fantastic. You can check out stuff on trevtutor.com. And as always, have a fantastic day.